friends, it's Miss Marcia. I hope everyone's doing well. Today, friends, I want to talk to you about a topic that I'm a pretty big fan of, and that's sports. I really enjoy watching sports, and I think I like playing sports even more. <laughs> Do you friends like to play sports? Do you friends know what a sport is? Well, a sport is a physical activity. That means it's an activity that gets your body moving gets your heart pumping, that people do for fun and as a way to uh, compete with others, also for fun. There are a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of different sports out there. Some sports you can play by yourself individually. Some sports you can play with teammates on a team. Every sport has their own set of rules and every sport requires their own type of equipment. Now, every sport has their own different set of equipment, but a lot of people, when they think of sports, they think of one main type of equipment, and that is a ball. Now, not every sport requires a ball. Sports like swimming and gymnastics, hockey, you don't need balls to play those, but a lot of sports do. And if your sport requires a ball, that is the most important piece of equipment you need to play that sport. You can have a basket, but you can't play basketball without the ball. You can have a bat and a mitt, but you can't play baseball without the ball, right? So today for our, I'm going to show you friends how to make four different types of sports balls. Uh, we're gonna make a baseball, a basketball, a soccer ball, and a tennis ball, all out of a paper plate. All right, so let's get that started. All right. So the first ball that we are going to make today is the ball that is used in Miss Marcia's favorite sport, and that is a baseball. Good luck there. Now baseballs, you can't see on the inside, I can't cut this one open, but they have a, a rubber or cork center that's wrapped in yarn. And what you can see is that it's covered in leather and stitch together with this red thread. And believe it or not, this stitching plays a big part in how the ball moves when it's thrown. All right, so this is a baseball. I'm gonna show you how we're going to make our own. Okay, so to make our baseball, all we really need is this, I'm gonna use this paper plate, some red paint, <clears throat> and a red marker. So, just like here, I'm gonna draw some curved lines. I got my lines, and then with my finger, I'm gonna use my pinky. I'm gonna stamp my print on both sides of the line, all the way down to make the stitching. Easy peasy. Oop. Get enough paint there. There we go. And there we have our baseball. Next up, we have basketballs. Oop. Once again, I can't cut this one open, but in the middle of basketballs, basketballs have what's uh, known as an inflatable bladder, which means their center can be blown up. That's where we would put the air pump. And that bladder is wrapped, <clears throat> excuse me, in layers of fiber. And then that's covered in usually leather or rubber. And you can see here, the ball is usually always split up by these kind of indented recessed lines, these ribs. And a whole variety of lines throughout the, the ball. If you look real closely, it's 
got kind of goosebumpy skin too. Basketballs can come in a variety of colors, but traditionally they come in orange and black. Now we are going to make our own. Okay, so now we are gonna make our basketball. I'm going to use another uh, paper plate. We'll need a black marker, orange paint, and I'm gonna use some Q-tips. So, like we mentioned, our basketball has these ribs right here, kind of these recessed indented lines. So we're gonna draw a few lines on our ball here. I'm gonna go across the plate. Right down up the middle. And then kind of like our baseball, give it some curved lines there. Okay. Now, if we also look closely, we can see these little orange kind of goosebumps on our basketball. So we're going to give our basketball the same bumps using our Q-tip. In our orange paint, we're going to dip it in and start dotting. I'm going to need more paint. Stay within the lines and dot within the areas that you have there. Fill your whole basketball up. And there we go. We have our basketball. Next up, friends, we have soccer. Soccer is probably Miss Marcia's second most favorite sport to watch. It is the most popular game in the world. And it is actually known as football throughout the world. Soccer balls, let me get you a closer look there, like bas are similar to basketballs in the sense that they have that inflatable bladder that we were talking about, the air pump where it can get blown up. That's that, so it can get reinflated. Soccer balls are then covered with a leather, a, like a synthetic leather, a fake leather. And the design of soccer balls is really unique. Soccer balls have 12 pentagon shapes which is this one right here, the five-sided shape. One, two, three, four, five. They have 12 pentagon shapes and 20 hexagon shapes. This is a six-sided shape. That is the hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we are going to make our own. Okay, so now for our soccer, aka football, we are going to use uh, another white plate, some glue, I'm going to use a glue stick, black paper, and optional black marker. So what I went ahead and did actually with the black paper was I went and cut a few of our pentagon shapes, our five-sided shape, one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to glue those onto our plate to make our soccer ball pattern.
and there we have our soccer ball. If you noticed, our soccer ball also has kind of like the basketball, some ribs, some <clears throat> recessed lines that attach the pentagons to the hexagons. So if you would like, you can also take your marker and start doing the same. See what kind of design you come up with on your soccer ball. That's mine. Well, let's see what yours turns out like. And there's our soccer ball. And last but not least, friends, we have the tennis ball. Tennis balls are small, like our baseball, a little lighter because they are meant to go far and fly. Tennis balls are fluorescent yellow. That means a very bright yellow. And they are covered in kind of this fuzzy, felt, which believe it or not, friends, just like the stitching on our baseball, this felt affects how the ball flies through the air. Yeah. So it's covered in a fluorescent yellow, a bright yellow with these kind of hard to see white lines. Now let's make our own. Okay, and last but not least, we have our tennis ball. So to make our tennis ball, I'm going to once again use our paper plate, some yellow paint, a paintbrush, glue, and yarn. Easy peasy what I'm gonna do with my bright, bright yellow. I'm going to take my paintbrush, dip it in my paint, and start painting. Okay, so once it dries, mine isn't dry, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and still continue, but you're going to let yours dry for a little bit. And once it does, after it does, you are going to use your glue to make kind of the same curved lines that we've been drawing on our basketball and our baseball. Not completely straight, but we're going to get that little curve there too. And once we have our glue there, we're going to get our yarn and cut a few pieces off. And then glue those pieces right on to the glue. We'll place them right on top. And then we can set that aside to dry. And there we have our tennis ball. Now we are all wrapped up. Thank you so much for learning about and making uh, sports balls with me today, friends. I do want to remind you that I just showed you a few ways that I like to make those sometimes. But the fun thing about art is that there is no right or wrong way. If you don't want to use paint, you don't have to use paint. Markers, crayons, watercolors, whatever. Um, 
get creative with it. If you do end up making any or all of these balls, please post them. I would love to see. Thank you so much, friends. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.